Good morning. We are so glad you're here this morning. We've come to celebrate this Advent season. For today, it's Preparation Sunday, or what we, we refer to as John the Baptist Sunday. And churches do Advent differently. Some are doing uh, hope, peace, love, and joy. We're, today, we're doing preparation. And are we prepared for the coming of the season? So thank you for coming today. Thank you for being a part of this service. And we just want to start off by giving God some praise. So let's talk about his joy. Stand together, if you would, please, as we sing Joy to the World. Let's praise him together. God, we are so very thankful today to be here in your house, to come and to worship and to praise your precious and holy name. Lead us now in all that we say and do that it will be for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Take a moment to welcome each other into God's house, would you please? As we approach this awesome season for those of us who are believers, we are also aware that within our community, within our own families, even within our own lives, there are some things where we need a special touch from God. And so this morning, I just want to simply ask that you take a few moments, that you go before God, that you give Him your praise, that you lay your burdens at His feet, and then I'll close this out. So church, let's have a conversation with our Lord.
Gracious God, thank you for this moment where we are allowed to come to collectively and together and to worship and praise. And Lord, in the midst of our praise, we want to recognize who you are and all that you have and have done for us. And so, Father, we come and we lift before you our praises, but also our prayer requests, acknowledging, Father, that we need you in our lives every day, that we need your power and presence. And Father, we're praying that your will will be done. So, Lord, in the lives of our friends, our family, ourselves, Lord, there are special needs. And so today, Lord, we come before you, acknowledging our need for you. So, Father, please hear our prayers. And we pray, God, that your will will be done and that you will receive all the praise and glory. Because, Lord, we know that in the moments of our weakness, you are strong. Help us to lean on your strength. Guide us now, Father, as we continue to worship and celebrate you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I'm going to ask if the Wilson family would come now and lead us in the lighting of the preparation candle. So last week in our church, we celebrated the prophecy and the promise of hope. And that's what that first candle represented, the Isaiah candle. And today it's the John the Baptist candle, the preparation. And so the scripture that they shared with us today is also that prophecy, but it talks about the fact that there will come and we need to be ready when Jesus comes. And so we want to celebrate that, especially during the season, and be sure that our hearts are made right with the Lord and that we are prepared for his coming. We're going to do our offertory time now, so you give as the Lord leads as part of our act of worship, and thank you for being a part of the service, and thank you for giving as the Lord leads. Angels from the realms of glory is what we're going to stand and sing together. Would you stand with us, please? Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth, ye Sang creation story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with us is now residing. Yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam upon. Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship. Worship Christ, the newborn King. We'll ask our ushers to come forward now, please. Gracious and almighty God, thank you again for our time. Lord, we now give back of our tithes and offerings. For Lord, we know that all that we have is 
because of you. All that we have, we have been blessed by you. And so, Lord, please accept these offerings to the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grab your Bibles, if you would, please, and turn with them with me to Matthew chapter 3. We're going to spend just a quick moment between verses 1 through 11. As we're celebrating the Advent season, and we're talking about today about the reason why it's so important that we prepare. And most of you who are Revolutionary War buffs or like to study American history, you understand what the Paul Revere ride was all about, right? You know and remember the story where he would ride through the towns and the villages declaring about what was going to take place soon. The British are coming. The British are coming. Prepare. Try to get excited. Well, for us Christians, this is that time of year when we get excited about the coming of our Savior. And we get excited about telling the rest of the world about the power and the coming of our Savior. So join me, please, if you would, in Matthew chapter 3, beginning in verse 111, verse 1 through 11. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying... Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is who he has spoken. And through the prophet Isaiah, this is a reference back to what the Wilsons just shared with us a few moments ago, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight the paths for him. His role was to be absolutely sure that the people were prepared and excited about the fulfillment of the prophecy of Jesus coming, the hope for all mankind, the one who was going to come to save that which is lost. 
to prepare a way for us, to help us be a part of the way through our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, that we might have the opportunity to, have, to walk with the power of the Holy Spirit each and every day, to find forgiveness of our sins, and to know that we get to spend eternity with our Lord. So John says, prepare. Prepare your hearts. Prepare the way of the Lord. If you know John's story, he was kind of a rough, rough cut individual, living out in the wilderness, eating bugs and wearing whatever he could find. But he was prepared to celebrate the coming of our Savior. He was prepared and he wanted the rest of the world to know that hope. And so for those of us today as Christians, as we celebrate this wonderful Christmas season, this is our call to help others be excited about Jesus. So let's do our best to point others towards our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's the quickest sermon you're ever going to hear me preach. I'm going to ask if our praise choir will come now and prepare because we're excited to be able to share this music of the Christmas season. It has been a long time since we've had a choir to sing for us at Christmas. And so we are so excited to be able to do this again and to be able to share this with you again. Pete, if you'll start the track.
time, we gather around the manger of Bethlehem. Not literally, of course, but we try to recreate that scene so that we can somehow understand God's plan. Sometimes we try to find a point of view by pretending to look over the shoulders of characters who were actually there. Mary, Joseph, shepherds, and wise men. We occasionally even add some characters, like the innkeeper, who aren't actually mentioned in scripture, but were most likely close by. Today, let's gather at the manger once more and try to look at it differently, from our own points of view, from the eyes of our own hearts. What will we find? I don't know. But I pray that we'll all see something unique to us, something that God is trying to show us, tell us, something fresh and new. I know he doesn't look like Almighty God right now. He looks like any newborn baby. He cries, he sleeps, he needs to be fed and changed. He's a child, but that's not all there is to see. He's more than just a child, and that's what we need to settle first in our hearts. That this little child lying in a manger really is who God promised to send, a savior, a deliverer. So why do we need a savior? Why do we need to be delivered? Look closely again but not at the child this time. Let's look at ourselves, inside our hearts. Anything there that's not perfectly in sync with God's plan is sin, and we're all guilty of it. But Jesus didn't come to earth to tell us that, or to condemn us. He came to save us from it. In fact, the name Jesus, given to him by an angel, means Savior.
you getting the picture now? Is it becoming clear what God is trying to say? If so, thank him right now for speaking to you. Ask him to give you strength to do as he asks. If you're not sure what God is trying to say, ask him to speak a little louder or in a different way. Ask God to open your eyes and ears so you can truly see Jesus in a way you've never seen him. So here we are, gathered around the manger, as families, as friends. It's not an accident, you know, that we're here. God had it planned for a long time. So celebrate, worship, pray, fellowship. Let's gather now and sing once more about the wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace, Almighty God himself, who is with us now. Thank you. 
And that is our goal today, is to sing Gloria and to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I want to thank our choir for poor, so much hard work that they put in, and they've just practiced and practiced and practiced, even when they didn't want to practice, but they did an awesome job. And we're not through yet. On the 24th, our kids' choir is going to come, and the bell choir is going to come and do some more for us, so we hope you'll be with us again on the 24th. Our desire in this wonderful Christmas season is that each one of us has the opportunity to grow closer to Jesus, that our relationship with Jesus Christ will be better today and tomorrow than it was yesterday, and that we'll lean on him and be more dependent upon him each and every day. And so we're praying for each and every one of you that you have a wonderful Merry Christmas full of blessings, and let's remember to share those blessings with those that we come in contact with. I'm going to simply ask if you will stand and we'll have a word of prayer. And we will call this and dismiss the service, and you can swim home. <laughs> Let's pray together. Gracious, almighty God, we are so very, very thankful today to have been given the opportunity to come and to celebrate and to worship your power and praise that we've lifted up to you. Lord, it has truly been our honor to glorify your name. Now, Lord, help us to remember what this season is about. That it's finding peace and joy and comfort in this season and providing and sharing that with others as we celebrate the promise of our Savior. Father, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this opportunity to gather today. I pray as we prepare to leave this place that you will renew our hearts and our relationship with you. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Some quick announcements to share with you before we go. Please, please note that the Lunch Bunch is leaving this on the 15th and leaving the church at 11 a.m. to go to Tappanic to the To Do Cafe. You define if you qualify for Lunch Bunch or not. We say it's those who are retired, want to be retired, recently retired, or just think they are retired. You come and be a part of the Lunch Bunch. You're welcome to come. Next Sunday after the service, real quick, budget and finance meeting uh, as we prepare for the new year. And I guess on the 24th in the morning, the children's musical presentation. And then the evening at 5 o'clock, Christmas Eve communion. And you know us. We do our best to get you in and out of here in about 30 minutes so that we can honor your time with family. And thank you so very much. Also on the 31st, you see we have a deacon ordination service coming up, and we hope that you will be a part of that. Anything you need to share with us before we go? Mr. Jeff, would you be so kind as to introduce the newlyweds that are next to you, please, sir? That's right. Welcome and congratulations. Good to have you with us this morning. Thank you so much. Amen. Kids Choir, Wednesday night, 6 o'clock. Don't forget. All right. I'm going to ask if Mr. Keith Wilson would lead us now in our closing prayer.